So the battle over concealed carry is once again back in the hands of the Supreme Court as a result of the Bruin decision being directly defied. So let's talk about what is now happening in this case that is up for Supreme Court consideration. But real quick before we jump into this video, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is American Hartford Gold. If there's one thing that those of us in the firearms and second amendment community know and understand, it's that you cannot rely on the government for protection, not with your life and not with your wealth either. As we face unprecedented inflation, it's becoming increasingly important to shield your savings. Banks are going to be having issues left and right. We've seen a lot of things change, uh, interest rates, inflation. And so one of the things that you wanna protect yourself with is potentially uh, some precious metals. If you would like to start investing in precious metals or protecting your wealth of precious metals, I cannot recommend American Hartford Gold enough. They have thousands of five-star ratings and uh, A plus from the Better Business Bureau. And if you tell them that I sent you, they'll give you up to $5,000 in free silver on your first order. So if you're interested, call them now, or you can click the link down below in the description. You can call them using the number 866-338-3915. That's 866-338-3915 or text armed to 65532. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be discussing how this issue of concealed carry and the whole second amendment question is once again in front of the Supreme Court because New York continues to defy what the Supreme Court said in Bruin. You may recall that recently there were five cases which had expedited hearings before the Second Circuit Court of Appeals because of the recent warnings that the Supreme Court issued to the Second Circuit. These five cases challenged New York's new Concealed Carry Improvement Act, also known as the CCIA, which ultimately that law creates a hyper-restrictive concealed carry law which is in place in the state of New York. The state of New York passed this law just eight days after the Supreme Court issued their landmark 6-3 decision in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin. Bruin is a case which struck down New York's previous concealed carry laws. New York and the Second Circuit continue to defy that express decision by the Supreme Court in Bruin, and now Gun Owners of America, or GOA, has asked for the Supreme Court to re-review this Antonyuk case, to re-review this issue of concealed carry, uh, New York's defiance about concealed carry and their defiance of the Second Amendment, and ultimately, GOA is asking for the Supreme Court to strike down New York's defiance once again. Now, when Bruin, the Supreme Court struck down New York's original May issue CCW licensing scheme, finding that it was inconsistent with this nation's history and tradition. One of the primary findings of that Bruin decision was that the government bears a burden to prove that their restrictions are based in the history and tradition of our nation, and ultimately that those historical evidence and that tradition dates back to 1791. However, despite that decision, New York rushed through their Concealed Carry Improvement Act, the CCIA, which made a permitting scheme which is even worse than the one that existed prior to Bruin. Now, many of these cases were filed in direct response to the passing of the CCIA, and they went before federal district courts who ultimately granted various preliminary injunctions, which halted some of the enforcement of the CCIA. However, the state of New York appealed those decisions up to the Second Circuit, who in response granted blanket stays on those decisions without issuing opinions on the stays or even holding hearings in those cases. Now, in response to one of those cases, which is the Antonyuk case, GOA then sought emergency review from the United States Supreme Court. The Supreme Court on review of that emergency application denied relief that was being requested by GOA, but the order of the Supreme Court also did state that the Second Circuit cannot simply just drag their feet on this issue. Instead, the Supreme Court told them and gave the Second Circuit a chance to actually do their jobs. The Second Circuit was given an opportunity to either issue an opinion on why they did not grant the stay, or in the alternative, they could expedite hearings on all these CCIA challenges. And ultimately, what they decided to do is grant expedited reviews in all these cases. Now, one of the other interesting things out of that Supreme Court order, even though they denied the review, the emergency application, they did indicate that if the Second Circuit did not respond appropriately, if they did not do their job, well, then the plaintiffs here, GOA, could reseek emergency applications and potentially the Supreme Court at that point would grant review. Recently, the Second Circuit held expedited hearings in these cases, and then they issued five rulings on different cases. These cases were the Christian v. Negrelli case, which dealt with the concealed carry restrictions on private property. And then you also have the Hardaway v. Negrelli case, and then the Spencer v. Negrelli cases, which dealt with the carry ban at churches in places of worship. And then you also have the Antonyuk v. Negrelli case, 
which is kind of the broader GOA challenge that was brought. It's just a broader challenge against multiple aspects of the CCIA. And then finally, you also have the Gazzola v. Hockel case, which dealt with the impact of the CCIA on FFLs and some of the ammo restrictions. So we've talked about all these cases in the past, but those are all the cases that the Second Circuit reviewed and ruled on. Now, many of you are aware, and we've talked about on the channel, that in December, the Second Circuit ruled in these cases. The Second Circuit ultimately vacated some of the district court's injunctions uh, you know, against the enforcement of the CCIA. And in their decision, the Second Circuit distinguished Bruin as an exceptional case. And that is one of the big sticking points for why Supreme Court review is now needed. The Second Circuit vacated a lot of the district court's injunction, finding virtually all of the CCIA to be facially constitutional under the Second Amendment. So they said, even despite Bruin, we still believe a lot of the CCIA, which was put in place in response to Bruin, is constitutional and does not violate the Second Amendment. Again, this is the Second Circuit's decision, which is reviewing the concealed carry laws in New York, which were passed just eight days after the Bruin decision. To argue that Bruin and that case and that rationale is distinguishable from this issue now in the CCIA is almost absurd. In response to that Second Circuit ruling, GOA has now filed a petition for Supreme Court review in this Antonyuk case. Now, in this specific petition, GOA points out that after that Bruin decision, there are a ton of diverging opinions on what type of historical support is appropriate to justify these types of governmental restrictions, like what is happening with the CCIA. Some courts like the Second Circuit continue to permit later historical support in these cases, which is not appropriate. GOA states in their petition that, although it has been nearly two years since Bruin was decided, the lower courts have failed to coalesce around a definitive answer to the question of 1791 versus 1868. There is a multi-way circuit split on that question, and the district courts are in disarray. If anything, the lower courts' approaches have only continued to diverge and multiply since this issue arises in most Second Amendment challenges. This case presents an excellent vehicle for this court to resolve the debate between 1791 and 1868. They go on to state in the petition that, Below the panel relied almost without exception on historical laws enacted well after the Second Amendment's ratification, with the earliest being nearly half a century after the founding. Strikingly, of the three earlier analogs the panel did reference, everyone was considered and rejected in Bruin. And the only time the panel did examine a series of founding era statutes, it affirmed that part of the district court's injunction. In other words, the Second Circuit's singular focus on mid to late 19th century history was outcome determinative in this case. Now, this fact is very important, not just for this case, but a lot of other 2A cases going forward. One of the new tactics of liberal courts and anti-gunners and these types of anti-gun states is to justify their restrictions using historical support, but instead they always use later historical gun control laws, and even sometimes they decide to use racist laws. The outcome of the Antonio case is also very important for people like me in California who are also facing a concealed carry ban and carry restrictions under SB2. California passed a similar carry ban in response to Bruin, essentially with some of the same rationale, uh, using a lot of the same language, and CRPA filed a lawsuit against SB2. Myself and Reno May are plaintiffs in that case, and currently it's up for debate in the Ninth Circuit. And there's going to be a lot of debate and back and forth about historical evidence, and no doubt this you know, Antonyuk case will also play a big role in the Ninth Circuit. It's sided with California. It was cited in the decision down below by some of the judges. And so it's going to be important. This debate about what historical support is appropriate is one of those things that is relevant, not just in New York, but all other areas and all other 2A cases as well. Now, I also want to be clear. This debate between 1791 and 1868 isn't really a debate. Instead, it's a made up issue or ambiguity that is being used by the anti-gunners. That is because they know that they have little to no support for their types of modern restrictions. They have no historical support dating back to 1791, so they want to move the historical goalpost. They want to use later historical evidence. GOA then concludes in their petition by directly pointing out that the Second Circuit, along with a lot of other lower courts, continue to directly defy what these courts said in Bruin. GOA states in their petition that, repeatedly, the panel advanced the remarkable theory that it was not bound to apply the court's methodology in Bruin, labeling Bruin a case of exceptional nature. The panel surmised that the courts are not required to follow Bruin's lead in cases challenging less exceptional regulations. The panel repeated this claim no fewer than four times, each time justifying circumvention of a portion of the Bruin framework. 
And that's why GOA is going back up to the Supreme Court in reaction to that recent Second Circuit decision and the defiance of not only the state of New York, but these lower courts like the Second Circuit. GOA is asking for the Supreme Court to take up this issue of concealed carry again and deal directly with defiance that is coming out of the Bruin decision. Of course, if this happens, that has far-reaching implications, not just for New York, not just for states like California and their concealed carry bans, but a lot of the other issues as well. So this is definitely something that we're gonna be watching closely. Again, shout out to GOA, go support them. I will leave a link down below where you can donate and support GOA. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.